I think it's about 15 pounds, this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a fresh one, although there are frozen ones on the market, there right? There certainly are. And I think frozen ones can be are very good, indeed, if you get it from a reputable store, they should have remained frozen. What's terrible in the turkey is if it's frozen and defrosted and refrozen, and then the breast gets kind of shreddy. You have to go to a good store, I think. I think so. You know? And I hate that little red thing, whatever it is yes. in it, so I take mm -hmm. that out. There is that type of uh, plastic thing at the end. I don't know why they put it on. We remove the plastic. Anything which is not turkey, we remove first, right? Oh, did they give us a nice packet of giblets? I think so. What, what do we oh, have in they there? Oh, they didn't give us much. And I should have the neck here. All of that is going to go in our stock. So we need it. And we're going to make a giblet gravy. Giblet gravy. Well, there's a there's the gizzard, the giblet. Okay. As a matter of fact, they give us quite a nice liver this time. And the neck is going to go into the turkey stock for the gravy. And I think one thing else you have to watch out for, say, in Thanksgiving, if you think you're getting a fresh turkey, they're going to do 4,000 turkeys. They can't possibly slaughter them all in one day, so they've been sitting around in ice, mm -hmm. and you may be better off getting a frozen turkey. But if you get a frozen turkey, be sure to defrost it under refrigeration for like 48 hours. It oh, at least, long, yes. yes. Well, what we're going to do is, rather than doing it just a plain roast, we're going to roast the breast separately and the leg thighs separately, and then sort of lean them against each other so it'll look like a whole turkey. But it takes about half the time. Shall I start by You're taking out the leg? Yes. I'm raising it out to use it as a weight, you know? so that I can cut the skin to a certain extent. That's no, all you have here, just the skin. And you're cutting it up to this point. And at that point here, when I get up to the carcass, then I will have to take that we piece here. We have what we call the oysters. That's so you can see that up. And there I finish against a bone also. And at that point, you have to crack it up. And often people extend the leg and try to crack it this way. You that, can't. That what you have it. to do is to bring it here, grab it at the knee, that's where it cracks off. See, and, that's you know. wonderful. It just breaks off. And here you have the large sinew. Joint. We cut through the sinew. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is to pull it out. So that's it. On this side, the same way, too, I cut the skin, and the just, oyster. And just feel that point, that oyster of meat up there. Crack it out. open, cut through the sinew, and pull out. So that's, that's great. pretty good. So this is, now we have our breast, right? Mm-hmm. We keep the wing on? Yes, we're going to take off the nubbins. Oh, you, you, we take out the, what do you call it? Nubbin. The nubbin, and which is that little, that little piece at the end and here? That little piece there. But everything goes into the stock. And the stock here, and that part. So this, now we're going to cut the carcass. We're going to cut the whole carcass here and there to give that for the stock. This there. way. And this is perfectly easy to do yourself, too. And this way, here. This is our stock. Here is the breast of our turkey, maybe too much skin. I'll take a little piece out of it. Here. I'm going to take out the wishbone. Oh, yes, you want the wishbone. Yeah. OK, that part here, we put that underneath also. We call that wings akimbo. Oh, is that what they call? Well, that's what I call it. Oh, good. So here, you can see that there is a triangle here, and you can fill it, the wishbone here. So what you have to do is to cut on each side the of it. The reason for taking that off is that it makes carving much easier and neater. Yes. And okay. then you try to pry it out with your finger. You don't have to get it out in one piece. You just get no, the two No, you have to get it prong. out in you one piece. You can get the two prongs out. Oh, you want it because you want a wish on it. Let's yes. See. We have to get it That's out in one piece. That's for the children in the audience. I broke it. <sighs> we can put on it. But that's for your stock, too. So we are ready for this. This I'm going to put on the side here. And this I'll cut with the stock there. Shall I start browning that yeah, a little bit? I think so. You have your vegetable. Oh. We have the neck. We have the gizzard. Shall I continue boning on the leg? Yes, I okay. think that's fine. I'll start that. And we're cutting the end of the drumstick here. And as you can see, at the end of that drumstick, 
there is an enormous amount of very tough sinew here, which are kind of difficult to pull out. You could, with a plier, pull them out at that point, but it's much easier to pull them out when it's cooked. As the meat is cooked, it comes out. All we want to remove here is the bone from the thigh, the thigh bone, which is here. So all you do, you run with your knife on each side, a little bit this way. And all you have to do is to fry your finger underneath, put your knife underneath, and after scrape it, you scrape it up to the joint here, and then we want to cut through the joint. That's more stuff for the stuff. Here you are. And the second one in the same way. And in the place of the thigh bone, we're going to put some of the stuffing. You could also put herbs, you could put chopped mushroom, you could do whatever you want to flavor it. So now we have those two legs, which are ready to be stuffed and replaced together. How is the stuck doing? Well, slowly, I'm to brown these vegetables that are going into the stock. I have some carrots and onions and a little bit of celery. While the meat's browning, I'm going to brown the vegetables, too.